Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Wazord and in this video I want to talk about buckling analysis in Abacus part 1, comparison of analytical and numerical results using beam elements. How to ask your video related questions? Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content of this tutorial. There is an analytical solution to calculate the critical buckling load of the slender beams which has a good agreement with experimental results. In this tutorial, a simple slender beam under axial compressive load will be modeled using beam elements. There are pinned boundary conditions on both ends of the beam. Finally, the simulation results will be compared to the critical buckling load calculated using analytical solution. Now I want to talk about the definition of the slender beam. I have created a part named beam, it is 3D, deformable, and it is wire. Its height is 1 meter and its radius is 2 centimeters. Now I want to show it in abacus. This is the beam, its height is 1 meter and I have defined a circular profile for it with the radius of 2 cm and I have defined a beam section and I have added this profile to it. Now I go back to the slides. Now I want to talk about the definition of the material. As buckling analysis is a linear analysis, Defining the elastic behavior is enough to conduct the simulation. Also, there is no need to define density. Here, I have only defined the elastic behavior. Um, I have assumed that the beam is made of steel, so I have defined its Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. And I have not defined density or plastic behavior. Now I want to talk about the definition of step. To calculate the critical compressive force and buckling mode shapes, the buckle step must be defined. It is one of the linear steps which cannot include the large deformations effect and can only solve the problem for linear perturbations. In the results file, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors represent the critical compressive force and mode shape of each buckling mode. Here I want to create step 1 and I have set the procedure type to linear perturbation and I have selected the buckle step. And this is the buckle step. Here we must select between two eigensolvers, Lanxos and subspace. The Lanxos method is generally faster when many eigenmodes are required for a system with many degrees of freedom. However, this method does have some limitations. Here the limitations have been written. And the second eigensolver is subspace. The subspace iteration method may be faster when only a few eigenmodes are needed. Here. I have requested 20 eigenmodes. According to the documentation, if you want to calculate the first 10 eigenmodes, then you must request more than 10 eigenmodes to maintain the accuracy of the calculated first 10 eigenmodes. For example, here I have requested 20 eigenmodes, but the accuracy of the calculation of the first 10 modes is appropriate, okay? And for example, uh, if you want to have the first 20 modes, then you must request, for example, 30 or 40 eigenmodes. Now I want to show you these settings in the abacus. Here we have the material definition. Uh, there is nothing to do in the assembly module. And here we have the buckle step. 
Uh, there is nothing to do in the other tab. Now I go back to the slides. Now I want to talk about defining axially compressive force. To do the buckling analysis, an axially compressive force with a total value equal to 1 must be applied to the structure. Here, as you can see, I have defined a compressive load and the arrow is downward. And its value is minus 1. In the more complex structures, if here we have a distributed surface, then we must apply pressure or we must use coupling constraint. And for example, if you want to use pressure, then the total value of the distributed force must be 1. Now I want to talk about defining boundary conditions for the beam top end. As the force is applied along the y direction, u2 is not restricted for the beam top end. Here we have the beam top end and uh, we have applied the compressive force here. And this node must not be restricted along the y axis because uh, the load is applied here. And here, as you can see, U2 is not restricted. And also, UR3 is not restricted because here we have the pinned boundary condition. Now I want to talk about defining boundary conditions for bottom end of the beam. Here we have the bottom end of the beam and uh, I have restricted all of the degree of freedoms instead of UR3 because here we have pinned boundary condition, so UR3 must be free. Now I want to show you these settings in Abacus. I go to the interaction module. Uh, there is nothing to do in this module, so I go to the load module. And here I have defined the concentrated force. And I have defined two boundary conditions. Pin 1 for the top and pin 2 for the bottom. Now I want to talk about meshing the wire. As the nodes of the beam elements have rotational degrees of freedom, there is no need to define a very fine mesh to obtain accurate results. So here, I have set the approximate global size to 0.05. So we will have 20 elements along the beam. And here you can see the simulation results. And here we have the first buckling mode. And the eigenvalue is equal to this value. And the unit of this value is Newton. And as the total value of the compressive force is equal to 1 newton, so this value is equal to the critical buckling force. Now I go to Abacus to show you these settings. I go to the mesh module. Approximate global size is set to 0.05. And the element type is beam. Now I go to the results. This is the first buckling mode. This is the second buckling mode. This is the third buckling mode. This is the fourth buckling mode, and so on. Now we must compare this value with the analytical solution. Now I want to compare the numerical and analytical results. Here we have the analytical solution to calculate the critical buckling force. 
and here I have calculated I and I have put it in this formula and here we have the Young's modulus and the length of the beam. Length of the beam is 1 meter and the Young's modulus is this value and I have put I here and the buckling force is this value. And here we have also the numerical value. There is a good agreement between the analytical and numerical results. So our modeling and simulation was correct. In the following tutorial, the slender beam will be modeled as a solid and meshed using solid elements. Also, a mesh sensitivity analysis will be conducted to investigate the effect of the solid element size on the accuracy of the simulation. You can contact me using Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk, WhatsApp and making special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high-quality simulations for your thesis, exercises and industrial projects and we can support you in writing the modeling and result discussion part of your thesis and we have consulting services for MSc or PhD positions or job interviews and can help you in preparing the presentation of your simulation works. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.